This is the Albuquerque Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we interview leading local business leaders to inspire the vision and spirit that is in every entrepreneur, discussing strengths, weakness, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together to fulfill a shared vision of a new future for Albuquerque. Hi, my name is Chase Ruby, and welcome to the Albuquerque Business Podcast. Today on our show, we have a very special guest. I don't want to give it away, but he is the owner of a local magazine here in Albuquerque, and we're going to talk with him about traditional and digital marketing, so stick around. This podcast has been brought to you by 99.9 The BFM. Uh, if you're living here in Albuquerque, tune on your radio to 99.9 FM, or you can go and stream it at work at www.99thebfm.com. That's www.99thebfm.com. We also want to thank Duke City Marketing. They are the latest state-of-the-art digital marketing agency here in Albuquerque. If you're looking at doing Facebook ads, Snapchat, Instagram, uh, you know, Google, pay-per-click, SEO, whatever that may be, please don't hesitate to go to www.dukecitymarketing.com. That's dukecitymarketing.com. And I'm so excited today to have on our show Josh Van Landingham. He's an entrepreneur, and he's built a brand and a magazine here locally. Uh, the magazine's called Josh. It's Albuquerque Live. Yeah, Albuquerque Live or ABQ Live is what we usually go by. Perfect. Well, let's get into, if you don't mind, let's get into how you started the magazine. Um, but are, are you originally from here in Albuquerque? I'm from a little north in the Hamas Mountains, um, but it's close enough that this is the was the closest city to where I grew up too. So right. I'm kind of, you know, basically from here. And then I moved here when I was 18, came to UNM and did the whole, did the whole thing and worked <laughs> at UNMH. So I'm, right. I'm basically a, or Kenya, as they say. Yeah. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you know, raised, Yeah. you know, you were basically raised here. Now, um, as far as starting the ABQ live magazine, how did that process, where did that first originate at? You know, um, I never had a plan to create a magazine or, become part of a media company that that was uh, never in the in my you know forethought as a as a college student or as a young professional but um, I've come from an entertainment family all my family are musicians so oh, I've always cool. been kind of tied to or interested in I guess what's going on you know around right, me whether right. it was at the university or you know when I got older what, what was going on in Knob Hill and those types of things so um, when I wasn't when I after college in my first job I was kind of disconnected from what was happening and that was mm -hmm. before a lot of websites and any of these apps that we have now um so we created abq live to connect people to what was going on and at that point it was really just a rinky dink website that we built that had a google calendar <laughs> oh, i think that might have been a yahoo calendar um <laughs> oh we're going back to yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> so uh -oh. and all it was was listings you know and, and people could you know tie into um what they wanted to do and we're getting information from you know venues and bars and restaurants to the consumer um and trying to catch up with what the rest of other big cities were doing um and then that eventually uh evolved because we started taking images um out and about at these events uh and the images started taking off right right and that kind of uh created a transition into print media i had seen you know san diego had a giant entertainment publication at that time that had just got bought up by the by the news Paper. So I was like, well, hey, why is there one for young professionals here in Albuquerque? Let's try to do one. And and if you look back at them now, they weren't so good. We were kind of trying to figure it out as right, we went. Right, right, right. But it was the evolution of the city along with a few guys that wanted to evolve with it. Right, right. And I think something that you just said that's so key, and I want to talk about it because on your magazine, if you if you get those, I know they're – you purposely place them where young professionals out. That yeah. seems to be your target market. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, we don't have an issue with people picking up our magazine. It's a free publication. And, right. and if you look at it, I think it's beautiful. Um, but we have to be really particular about where we put it um, because I want our demo to be our target demo to be the majority of the people that are picking it up. So we, we focus places like, and, and the target demo being young professionals and millennials, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the university area, so like Frontier and Saggio's, we go through tons, places like Marble Brewery, where mm -hmm. lots of young professionals right. go through, um, a few select places in Uptown, um, we just signed a big deal with the new Salt Yard, so we'll be tons of magazines out of there, so oh, those types awesome. of locations where right, we right. know our readership is going to frequent, yeah. and we feel like that, that creates that symbiotic nature of, that also helps the businesses, right? 
because right, it's connecting of right, yeah. them to them, right? And, and you know, it is something that um, I want to talk about a little bit, especially here in Albuquerque. This young professional, and you said millennial, which is a scary word to a lot of people. <laughs> right. And I know you do marketing and digital marketing, but um, your magazine, like you said, is beautiful. I, you know, I would rate it with any magazine that's out there. I mean, the the photography, especially on the food side of things, and we'll get into that later, but I want right. to get into this young professional, this millennial, um, and how you gear the magazine for that in that arena. Well, I think there's a bigger window than there's ever been before for a young professional to spend money on entertainment, right? right. Because a lot of them are waiting for waiting to get married, waiting to have kids, right. waiting even waiting to buy their first house. Um, now they may not be making as much as previous generations, but they are, they also aren't they don't have as many bills. Mm, so they do right. spend on concerts, bars, right. restaurants, um, mm-hmm. quite a bit more than they ever did. And and it's and and it's that window that's important because they do it for a longer time. Right. Um, and and that's where we want to connect those individuals to the places that they're going to spend that money because they want to know what where that is, whether it's a show at All Right Theater. Or, you know, a beer release at Santa Fe Brewery this weekend. It, they want to know so they can go because they're, they're the ones that are going to show up. Right. Yeah. They're, they're the ones. And I think a lot of companies are missing out on that target market. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I think it's people are a little more aware in bigger cities where there, you know, there are bigger media companies and agencies that are targeting it. But Albuquerque, as you know, usually follows up behind a lot of <laughs> right, that. Right, right, right. Um, and when I first started the magazine, nobody Nobody cared about this group. Zero. And it was hard for me. You know, I, I went from banging down doors trying to convince them that this this is an important group and they'll spend money in your place. Right. To now them calling me and saying, okay, our traditional way of advertising isn't working. What should we do to attract these groups? Right. I mean, that's a huge difference from where I started and where we are today. Yeah, and I and I think that's that's important because you have dual incomes a lot of times. Yeah. Um. You it, it, some some may have one child, some may have all their pet owners. Right. You know, so the list goes on and on in that arena, and I, I think millennials are coming. You know, we always think of them as being, you know, some of us that are older think of them as being as kids. True. But the age, you know, it it grows older every year, and <laughs> yeah. it's there. The yeah. millennials are the consumers now. Yes, absolutely. Um, and they love to go out to eat. Mm-hmm. They love movies. They love music. They love festivals. Right. Um, you know, and especially with you and your magazine and what you guys do and, and how – you know, that ability to be able to create um, a story. Uh, and I think that's really important because, you know, on the digital marketing side of things, you know, Instagram is built off of stories. You yeah, know? right. And, and I love when you do, you guys do like launches with new restaurants or whatever. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like, what is it, if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm starting a restaurant, what are some of the first things that I could do that would that would help me launch, especially here in Albuquerque? Well, I, I think you know this particularly is you got to get all your social media in order, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and um, anytime we're helping to launch or we're helping to brand, there's a checklist of things that you need to go through, right? And um, making sure that your brand, because it's easy for you, say I'm the business owner, it's easy for me to understand my brand and my idea. Right. It's not always easy to translate that to a consumer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're and exactly being, right. And being open enough to give feedback on whatever it is, whether it's your, your logo that you're that you love so much. Right. If you need to adjust that, you need to adjust that. If you need to, you know, if, if you need to adjust your layout, you have to be ready for any of those things mm-hmm. because it can't be about you. No matter how how important this restaurant or bar is to you, it's about the people that are going to come in. Right. And how they're going to react to it. Um, so that's the, the number one. I always the number one thing that I always preach is be ready to adjust because mm-hmm. you're going to have to. Nothing works easy the first time. Um, you, there's going to be good things and there's going to be bad things. If you can't adjust, you're in trouble. Right. And I think um, on, you know, whether it's restaurants or bars or whatever, you know, obviously doing a, a big grand opening and using your magazine. Can you explain that? If somebody's looking and they're saying, yeah. hey, you know, I'm building a restaurant or I'm building a bar for young professionals. This is something new. And I know you just mentioned the sand. Uh, salt yard. I mean, the salt yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you just mentioned the salt yard. Um, can you kind of take us through the process of how they, if they wanted to hire uh, your magazine to come in, what what does that entail? Well, we do it a little differently than I, I guess um, some media groups would is because we do dabble in traditional and newer forms of um, media. Uh, we, we like to call it uh, kind of a circular process. We Our magazine really focuses on what, you know, kind of what's happening and what's right. happened. 
And if you look in there, there's a lot of imagery of people having a good time at locations, right? Um, and I, 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 I call that indirect advertising. When you see an image, kind of like what Snapchat does, right? We were doing that in print before Snapchat came along. It's an image of somebody having a good time, and there's a filter that says where that is. Right, right, it's exactly. Not, it's not about, you know, come in and get 10% off on your wings anymore. It's more about, oh, my goodness, they look like they're having a good time. I've seen this 10 or 15 times. Right. I better show up. So we try to in integrate print, social media. Um, we do a lot of Snapchat promos. Um, when I say promos, we're literally in the building. In, uh, getting people to use your Snapchat filter so that it's not, it, we're pushing that organic, if that makes any sense. Right. No, I get you. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're helping to push it along, you know, because right. it's going to happen on its own. But if you got somebody saying, hey, if you use the Snapchat filter, we're going to give you this, they're right. going to use it quicker. Right. right? Exactly. Um, we integrate a lot of that. We're, what we try to do is at the end of the day, if I don't, if the brand doesn't personally drive traffic into your building, I don't feel like we've done our job. And that's a big difference between just buying an ad in a page right. compared to some companies or just getting a, uh, a radio spot. You know, you don't know what those are going to do. And that's a hard part on mine. The reason why I push it so hard is because I do a lot of the sales for us and everybody wants to know ROI, right? Right. If exactly. you see people in the building, you're getting a sense of ROI, <laughs> yeah. whether or not those numbers, you know, what those numbers come out to. If you know, we brought in a group of 20, you're happy. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you can see actually see the ROI. Right. And then online, you can see it through the social media aspect Yeah, and of through it. the analytics and those types of things. And, it, and you know, and I, I love what you're talking about Snapchat right now. If you do not think that millennials and young professionals are on Snapchat, then you're wrong. Right, <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's one of those things that um, it's going so fast. You know, we're trying to stay ahead of it so we can make sure we can utilize it in the best ways possible. Right. But it's we talked about it last time I talked to you. It's kind of the wild west of marketing right now. Um, there's so many new things mm -hmm. and this is, I mean, this is the infancy of a lot of this stuff, um, figuring out how to best utilize it. And we take, you know, I'm always telling other people take feedback. We take feedback all the time because we want to get better at it every day. Right. Right. It's really important. Yeah, no. And, and I think on your end, you know, having that ability to be able to, um, take that, uh, lens and look at it, not through them, because a lot of business owners can get, like you said, they can get so emotionally and tied to their right. logo where you can look at it and say, I've done all these launches. I know Albuquerque. Here's what's going to work. Here's what's not going to work. And so you can kind of bring that, you know, that other perspective into yeah. an owner. And we have a super unique position right now in Albuquerque. I, you know, I, I don't think there's anybody else like us because we've been on all parts of this. You know, I've helped companies with launches, you know. We, and while being on the media side and we work with so many bars and restaurants, I've seen so many plans and so many ideas and different angles. And right. I've seen what works and what doesn't work. And then I'm also a consumer and I'm really tied to the consumers because of the magazine side. Right. Exactly. So I got I get feedback from that side that that, uh, you know, just a bar owner ne wouldn't necessarily get that I get to uh, kind of tie into, uh, which is exciting to me because because I have it just gives me a better perspective on um, when I do say something is going to work or not that's from experience and that's mm -hmm. not from ego if that right. makes any sense yeah and i think and, and you know as well as i do albuquerque is a town that loves to go out to eat mm -hmm. they love to go to bars yeah if it is cool and it seems to be like you know the place that's happening online social media side of things you're not going to have an issue putting no. people in there but they have to make that consistency and i, I know we were talking before about um you know, post and posting consistently. Yeah. And I know your company provides that for, um, can we talk a little bit about that? Do you mind sharing with us a little bit about being able to consistently post on social media to gain that traction? Yeah. One of the big issues for a lot of these companies that we work with is there's never a dedicated social media person. You know, they don't hire for that in particular. Right. Um, and, what ends up happening is those responsibilities get thrown on somebody else and then they don't always, it doesn't always happen. And consistency, as you know, is the biggest part of social media. Mm -hmm. If you, once that dips, your business is going to dip every time. Right. Um, so what we do is we help provide some of that consistency and, and we'll, we'll go so far as to help build content and post for you for a lot of bars and restaurants. Um, and then, and then allow them to add anything on top of that. But at right. least, they know that base is taken care of. You know, 
they're not waking up at three o'clock in the morning and wondering, wait, did I did I post on Instagram today or not? Right. Because that's happened to me. So I know that's happening <laughs> with right, other right. with other people. Um, so that's just a service we started about four months ago uh, because of all this feedback that I've been getting. Yeah. Um, and it's been going really, really well because it it's anytime you can help a business owner take something off of them, they're going to mm. be better at the stuff they want right, to focus right. on. Exactly. And I feel like that's what we're doing for them. Yeah. I mean, they've got so much running the business. They, oh, ha- yeah. they have to focus on the systems and running it. Yeah. Not sitting there worried about, you know, if they need to post or not. Let's get into um, the bar scene a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then um, let's talk about that. What are some... It, you know, like if, if somebody's running a bar or they're fixing a starter bar, what are some of the things that you've noticed here in Albuquerque that is, you know, effective? Do you mean like product wise or from the marketing side? Yeah, or? marketing side. I, you know, some of the biggest things um, that I always communicate is um, you, you touched on it earlier. Any new place is going to get traction mm-hmm. early on because mm-hmm. we all want to see it. And we're all gonna go, we're all gonna give it a shot, right? Mm-hmm. And you see them, you know. I don't care if it's Krispy Kreme where there was lines all the way down the road to, you know, the Salt Yard where there was twelve hundred people for their soft opening. You know, right? We show up now. Um, the big part is, what do you do after that? Yes. Do people feel like they were taken care of when they were there? Um, is there a con- is there a loyalty or a connection to from the bar to the consumer? And that's something that I think sometimes gets glossed over. Other big cities where you're getting brand new customers on a weekly basis, that's not as important. But in Albuquerque, where it's smaller, much smaller, um, you have to take care of reoccurring customers or you're going to be in trouble. So, um, and, and that seems like a straightforward thing because that goes to the customer service side. Right. But it's really a loyalty um, creating scenario that, that I'm thinking of. It's, it's, we've all had that bartender that when you walk in, they know what you drink, right? Right, yeah, and that's exactly. just that's such a small thing that goes a long way for. And it's been around forever, but it, it it's it's right. it, it will make somebody decide to come the third, fourth, fifth time. Right, and that's where you that's where what makes or breaks you. Not that first opening weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, you're gonna do fine then. It's or you got reoccurring customers over time. That's the biggest thing for Albuquerque that I think of. Um, there's a lot of little things that I help with now as far as you know stuff that doesn't cost too much to to do. So like you know, Snapchat or YouTube or any of those types of things right. that you can always coach up um, as far as, and there's a lot of stuff online that you can find. Right. But if you don't have the customer service side, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. And you were telling me, um, you were, we were talking about it and you were telling me about um, the seasons. Is that the new? 52. Or, yeah. 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 Se- is it seasons face here or whatever? Yeah. And you were telling me about their process. Yeah. I think they did three and a half weeks or four weeks of just training dinners before they open so wow. i mean if you think about that the amount of food cost and labor costs for a opening for a month without any new right um consumers is a huge amount and that's mm-hmm. something that a corporate entity can do you know and then all of a sudden they're you know you wonder what now you know why when you right. walk in their customer service is, is impeccable it's because they put that amount of time into it um and that's a good way to look at it i mean i i get that a local place it probably isn't going to train for three and a half weeks but I think having that idea of three and a half weeks, a month of training is needed. How do you integrate it as you're going? Right. Is important because um, there's a lot of upsell procedure. I mean, there's just a lot of. The, but the I think I think stuff. one of the things you know, and coming from Seattle, coming to here, uh, customer service, and it's even joked about here how bad customer service is. Right. You know, so if you if it's a negative two and you just hit a five on a scale of one to ten. Yeah. You know, you're you're hitting it. You know, because most people here are not expecting to be treated well. Right. And, but and yet the, we go out to eat so much. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it amazes me, you know. So to be that brewery, because even breweries are not known for no. having good customers. But to be that brewery, to be that bar, to be the restaurant where you have amazing customer service and you can make those aha moments right. with the customer. I think that alone, you, you're going to you, you'll it's it's you're going to be successful. Right. And to tie it back to marketing. Um, you're not just creating that loyalty in your spot. Then all of a sudden they're sharing your social media posts. Mm-hmm. They're commenting on your stuff. They're referring you to other people. So it, it bleeds out into the marketing side where you need that. Um, it's super important to have shares on your posts and so that you're not having to boost everything that you do or right. you know, that, they're, that they always use the filter when they're in your spot because they feel like they're a regular, so they connect to that brand. Right. Um, so it bleeds up into the marketing side. 
And social media is so huge in Albuquerque because, and we've talked about this, Albuquerque is, is a big but small town. Yeah. So when you have a small town mentality, social media is huge. Yeah. And it's a way that launches, you know, like you said, you, you guys, you know, assisted with the launch or there was a soft launch or whatever, but yeah. there was 1,200 people showed up. Right. You know, see, that, that that's unheard of anywhere, ever else, but, oh, there's another restaurant opening up. There might have been more than that. Right. Um, because we, we left at a certain time. There may, they may have cleared those numbers. Who knows? But that's how Albuquerque is. We show up when something opens. Right, yeah. And, and I think, you know, so working on those systems as a business owner, working on those systems to say, okay, this is going to be successful. If we do these things, yeah. you know, and you can get a hold of Josh and he can go through that with you. But if we do these things, we know we're going to have a good launch. That, that's that's right. a given. From now, what can we do to have the sustainability? Right. And that's something I talk to um, my clients a lot is we're – when that launch is happening, are we gathering a lot of the material that we can use to, to, to use down the line? Right. Whether it's for, you know, Facebook or Instagram or whatever. When your place is full, you want those images, you want that video, you want, and it's hard if again. You can get their email addresses. Right. That's even better. If you <laughs> right. got, if you got, you know, we're doing a promo um, tomorrow where we're doing where we're gathering emails because that's important too. So. But again, is the business owner going to think of that? Not necessarily. I think right. it's easier to have us help you gather that stuff so you can worry about the 15,000 things that are going wrong on your launch because that's just you work through the kinks on the back. Right, end. right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And let me I, I want to share something with you. He's just brought something else. And, and Josh knows this. And, you know, his company can do this for you guys. If you get email addresses, you can go to Instagram, Facebook, all of these. You can put those lists. So if you collect. Yeah. 90 days worth of email addresses from all the customers that come into your restaurant or your bar, you get those email addresses, you give them to him or, you know, any, any marketing company that that's good, yeah. you give them to them, they can make lookalike audiences. What those lookalike audiences do is it will target the same exact people that are coming into your restaurant. Yeah. And, and think about that. And you know this as well as I do. Think about that. Where else can you target that specifically where you can say, out of 90 days, we've been having, you know, people that love Joe Rogan podcasts. I mean, Facebook knows all this about you. Instagram knows all this about you. Yeah, they do. And, and they're pet owners and they're this and they're that. You can turn around and, and target those same exact people. It's so simple to do. Right. Um, but yet no one's doing it. It YouTube amazes me. YouTube does it too, right? Right. YouTube does it too. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can do custom infinity audiences. And I think it's, uh, I think it's awesome when we look at what your magazine's doing, you know, not, not just with launches or not just on the marketing side, but the stories that are inside and how you're highlighting right. um, businesses and restaurants that are, um, you know, up and coming. I want to give props to your photographer. Yeah, Corey. Yeah, yeah, Corey. I mean, the pictures are amazing. Just to get those pictures from the way that he does food. Right. It's amazing. I, I mean, think... that that would be worth your cost oh, he, alone. He, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I think he's the best food photographer in the city, maybe in the state. I I mean, I, I'm biased a little bit too, but I think that's what um, you see it in the numbers too. When we're releasing right. things, those are the things that really jump off. Yeah. And if you go to Marble Brewery, go to go, go to these places and, and gra look at it's ABQ Live magazine. Yeah. L just look at the pictures, especially on the food side right. of things. You're, and I, I'm really lucky. So uh, Corey Kobayashi, he's my partner in the magazine, and he's more of the art side of it, right? Right. I'm more of the a analytical sales side, uh, marketing side. Right. Um, and, and I'm really lucky because you, you talked about it before. You know, the magazine's got to tell a story throughout. And mm -hmm. he helps. I mean, he's the catalyst at laying that whole whole thing out from start to finish. Um, and, and each issue telling a story and getting mm -hmm. the point across and integrating, you know, whatever clients we have into the content that we have. Um, so I think that's why we worked together for so long and we worked well together for so long is because um, he has an amazing sense of that side. Right. Um, and then once I have the product, I can get it out and explain to why, explain to a client why we can help them drive traffic. Right. Yeah. There's nothing worse than picking up a magazine and then you're just rolling page after page and there's no content. It's just yeah. ad, right. ad, ad, right. you know, and, and that's what I loved about your magazine. When I first looked at it, I was so impressed with it because it, it basically highlights you have on the front cover, you have, you know, a, a business owner or, you know, a restaurant owner, yeah. whatever it is. And then from there, you go inside and you tell those stories. Um, you have a happy hour section in there. And right. I know you're going to be doing uh, an app. Yeah, we, we tested that. an app um, a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago that went really well. Um, 
it just didn't do all the things we wanted it to do. Right. But we knew that there the interest was there. Right. Um, so now we're getting ready to release that. I'm hoping in the spring of 2019. Um, and, and our happy hour section in the magazine has done really well. Uh, we talked about this before. Happy hour is one of the only things that I've ever found that crosses huge demographics. Right. I don't care if you're 21 and you're going to happy hour before you go out or you're 61 and you're going to happy hour before you go to bed. You know, it's a huge demographic. This is important business owners to listen to this. If you own a bar in, in Albuquerque and you're not frequently updating your yeah. happy hour and getting it out there on the social media, and I know you guys can do that, but right. making sure that you're getting it out there so people know. Is there a place that's unique with happy hour or is there anything around? There's here? a lot of them. Yeah. Um, uh, I always go to Monta Vista cause that's where I kind of started um, my way of thinking of what happy hour can do because um, the, when I was in school um, it was 15 cent wings mm. and $2 China box. And we were there every Tuesday. And so was half of UNM and <laughs> that, that created a whole culture that is now Nob Hill Tuesdays um, which is not typically a busy night in any city. Right. But for Albuquerque, we got so used and it became part of the culture that you wouldn't have wings and beer on Tuesdays right. that it built this, this culture in that whole area. And that's what one happy hour can do right. when you get the right amount of people and the, and the right amount of uh, momentum with it. So, that I mean, that they always do a good one. Um, there's, there's so many now. Gardunios does a great one down um, in Hotel Andalus. Um, where they do live music and they got the patio out there in the spring. Right, right. There's a lot of them. Um, what were you saying? There's something early, like for people that were on the right. shift or something? Um, Fiesta's has a very unique happy hour. They do a early, like, morning happy hour for any of the late shift uh, pr people on the late shift that want to go have a beer after work, just like a normal person would. Right. But, you know, their times are flipped around. So yeah, that's I, awesome. I yeah. think they're the only ones that are doing that I know of. That there may be some other spots, but that's that's the first time I'd ever heard of that. So, yeah, and that's awesome. That's being extremely creative. Right, and finding a niche. That's part of part of what you, if you're competing in Albuquerque, you got to carve out some kind of niche right, to be right. successful. Yeah, why, if you're... If you if you're a bar or a restaurant and you're right next to a hospital, why would you not do that? Right. Yeah. I mean, it makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, there's there's shifts going 24 hours, seven days a week. <laughs> yeah. There. And, exactly. You know, so young professionals um, that that work at the hospitals, you know, that love to go out after a shift and go out right. with their. Um, I think that's awesome. Well, let me get. I want to get a little bit into um, not just you know the bar scene per se, but as an entrepreneur, what are one of the things that you would say would be most important? for somebody that's starting a business here in Albuquerque? Um, that's interesting. I, I touched on it earlier. I think one of the big things is being able to adjust to whatever comes your way. Right. Um, Cause you're going to have setbacks. I, you know, I, I, there's literally hundreds of setbacks that I've had since I've started mm -hmm. that um, in the moment, it's like, wait, how are we going to get past this? Mm -hmm. And then as you look back on it, it wasn't as quite, the big deal that you thought it was but if you're able to adjust <laughs> right based on those um and evolve over time and making sure because like i said before my product wasn't a magazine when i started right but i saw you know i saw a niche there that was open and we were able to evolve to fill that niche and i think i think that's really really important based on whatever business you're a part of um can you adjust and fill the role in that city because if, if you're trying to you know, slam an idea into a place that doesn't work, you're going to have so many problems. Right, exactly. But if you can adjust based on your audience, based on your location, based on your city in general, um, or if you're doing, you know, maybe you're doing a web business that's national, how, what makes you different and how do you fill those niches? I think that's really important. Yeah, and I think especially now, um, and I love that you said that, uh, people are, try to be so general. You know, yeah. oh, yeah, well, I'm going to open up a bar and call it the Albuquerque Bar. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> yeah. not making fun that way, but <laughs> it's like you, you, you've you got to be you've got to be niche nowadays. The places yeah. that we visit, there's a reason, a specific reason why we go there all the time. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I, I think it's okay to start general, but if you don't ever focus in that, that primary objective and mm -hmm. that primary audience and your primary um, focus for your business, right. you're never going to get – very far right exactly and i agree with that well we're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back with josh van landingham I want to make sure i get that right, right. with abq live magazine 
Join us this week for another episode of the Albuquerque Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, he interviews leading local business leaders that inspire the vision and spirit in every entrepreneur, discussing strengths, weakness, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together to fulfill a shared vision of a new future for Albuquerque. Listen or download this Sunday afternoon at 4 from your favorite podcasting app. And we're back with Albuquerque Business Podcast and with Josh with ABQ Live Magazine. Josh, what is your uh, website for your magazine? It's uh, www.abq-live.com. So it's abq-live.com. Right. And does it have, um, is there a way in there to get a PDF of the magazine or do you guys have anything? Just like... contact us if you want a digital copy of the magazine or oh, we okay, can send perfect. you, a, I mean, we can send out hard copies. We do a lot of different things depending on if you're a business or just a reader. Uh, we don't do subscriptions just yet. It's probably something we'll start in this next year. Um, we're more about people actually going into business to get the magazine. Right, and actually sense. getting it right. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So I want to go into a little bit about, um, I want to continue this on the digital marketing side, if you don't mind. I know yeah. that's we're both experts in that arena. Um, but I want to get into uh, the bar scene here mm -hmm. in Albuquerque. I know we've talked about you know happy hour and different things like that. We've got into it, and I know you've even ran bars. Mm -hmm. And so on the operation side of things, especially when it comes to customer service, what do we look at when we – what should an, an owner look like when you, when you first walk into the door? Let's put it this way because I almost feel like you're like the nice version of Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like you know Albuquerque. You could uh, – you know what – I mean, you're like the expert in that arena. And so – when you walk into a bar, what are some of the first things that you look at? I think the first thing is the environment, right? Um, visual. We're all so visual, and I think that's part of what uh, separates our magazine from a lot of things is we have that unique um, tie-in to what people want to look at. Right, right. Um, and, and bars are doing, I mean, that's come a long way now compared to, you know, when I was in my early 20s where, you know, you just open up the doors and it could be a dive bar and it could, you didn't really, there could be a pool table and a couple of neons and you'd be good. That's transitioned quite a bit now. Um, if I, I keep referencing the salt yard because I'm working with them a lot right now, but if you go in there, the signage is on point. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason for every sign or painting or um, uh, they, they even have, for example, they have wings on a wall. Right? I saw that on Instagram. Yeah. Right, because they know somebody's gonna walk up and take pictures and take front a of selfie, wings yeah. on the wall. Um, there's, there's things like that where it's really thought out compared to where you know, where it was when I was in my early 20s. So that's important, being able to um, adjust your, if you know your margarita, margaritas look really good, put them in a glass that's going to be photo, photo, photographed, sorry, photographed really, really well. Right, right. Um, um, things like that. I think that's really important. And, and, and I always start to twist it right away into how are we getting what's in here out to the public at the cheapest way possible. And that's that's where my brain goes, and it's and that's that's the way you do it, right? You right, want you exactly. want people to you want to crowdsource that marketing, and that's what Snapchat and Instagram and and Facebook will do for you. So that's that's number one. Obviously, on the customer service side, you want to be greeted. Um, again, we talked about it earlier. If if if, it, if you're a return customer, you hope that they remember you, and if they do, it puts you at ease. You mm -hmm. feel more comfortable. Right. Um, a lot of that stuff matters. Right, exactly. I, I even I saw a thing where it was really interesting um, on the marketing side of things that they were putting different colored napkins. Yeah, you know, it, with the yep. with the person that came the second time or third yep. time or whatever. It's very clever. There's a there's a few restaurant restaurateurs that do that where, um, if you see a red napkin on a table, it's because they're a first time customer, and then all the service and the, the the server knows that the manager knows that because it's a different experience for them. Right. Than it is somebody returning yeah see i love that because that that right there distinguishes so now you know not that you want to treat them in any you know you want to treat them like they're a first time guest all the time but at right. least you know you may need to explain the menu a little bit right. more um you need to explain the drinks that you serve right um and, and it's so interesting because you know like we're we're here in albuquerque the hispanic population you know is large and, and we have amazing hispanic food absolutely and to how can you be creative with that like you said the margaritas how can you do that differently you know what type of, um, of you know, like you said, even getting down fine, you, you can find unique glasses, so inexpensive. Right, yeah. And there, and there's there's a lot of people that are finding unique ways, you know. Even from, uh, I, I just saw a video from Desert Valley who's doing some of the um, chili and cheese that they're pouring onto your plate at 
table side. Mm, you know, that's some, awesome. Some of that stuff that you can be, it is, it is something that's maybe traditional, but how can you spice it up and, produ- and, and create, not create it differently, but do something differently in the process so it's different than enchiladas somewhere else or whatever Right, it is. just a hot plate coming to you. Right. Um, right, that customer experience. Right. And making sure. You, I mean, we all watch Netflix. There's hundreds of shows on there that are really go into, you know, these amazing customer experiences that some of these restaurants do. And you don't have to be over the top, but I think anything that connects the consumer's brain to, okay, that was unique, gives you an advantage. Right, no right. No matter ho- how good or bad the food is. I mean, it can't be terrible. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but. Right, right. Yeah, and we, and we talked about that before, uh, a place that I've visited several times. I don't know if you know the place or not. I won't say it uh, on the air, but... It, it's a really nice place to go to. It's kind of like the place to go if it's nice, you know, nice, and you want to go have drinks for New Mexican food. Yeah, yeah, no, no, not for oh, New okay. Mexican food. Just in general, they I have all you. different types of food, but it's known out there. And I've talked to other people, and I went there and I experienced it myself. I was like, this is such a beautiful place to go to, but the food is horrific. Oh yeah, yeah. I probably know what you're talking about. <laughs> and that's sad, you know that right. that it, it's that missing element. True. How do you get that back? You know what I mean? That's tough. Yeah, it really is tough, and it's it's amazing if we're talking about the same place, um, their their venue and their ambiance is at a level that people still will go back mm-hmm. because of that. So that says something to what they're onto there. If they can if they can get that third part of the food, which should be the most important part, um, even close to good, then they should be doing fine. But it's tough. Right. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And that that's something that is. You know, it just shows you how you can have that missing piece. And as a business owner, having somebody come in and tell you or show you that, you know, and taste your food and go yeah. through the process, um, you know, that it's so important because I don't know how many times I've had that where I've had somebody and it kind of hurts your feelings a little bit because you poured your blood, sweat and tears <laughs> into the yeah. business. And then somebody come around and tell me, why don't you do this differently? Or why are yeah. you doing that? We don't like to be questioned. Our ego doesn't. Oh, no, it's tough. That's really hard to take. And you just have to kind of step out of the moment for for a minute and remember long term that's what i tell myself at least you know um because i say i like feedback but not all feedback is good Mm -hmm. um so but being able to use that and and some of it is is real and useful and some of it's not and being able to pick and choose that but right but you're right I've, i've been there where it's like dang um we are doing this wrong or this looks wrong we should adjust but that's not it's not easy from an ego standpoint. Right. I went to a, a, a like a pub bar and it was so awesome. You know, I, I was in the Marine Corps and this place is in Arizona and this place like caters to the guy was a Navy SEAL. And so oh. it was just a real it almost looked like a CrossFit gym inside <laughs> oh, wow. and it was packed. But it caters to military. It caters to, you know, um, uh, police officers, firefighters, stuff like yeah. that. And even had lot, lots of memorabilia. You know, the fire firefighters had put special things in there. There was a ladder in there. Wow. Um, the base there had put different things. And it was just a really cool atmosphere. And I, I, like, fell in love with the place just going there. The food was bomb. Yeah. It took me an hour to get my food, though. Right. And I, I'm, like, sitting there struggling inside. like, it, And it was packed. So I was kind of like, uh, you know, okay. But, the, but there's that missing element again. Yeah. You know, the service was absolutely horrific. Yeah, and, and and then I felt even worse because I even went to their website and read about it, and it's all they only hire veterans. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. To you know, and, and disabled veterans and stuff like that to help serve right. the food. So then I'm feeling bad about <laughs> the review that I left because <laughs> I was like, yeah. this place is awesome, like super yeah. cool. They need to have more of these, right. you know, because it creates community, yeah. which is really hard to do. But waiting an hour for my fish and chips, it's tough. You yeah. know, you know, I literally an hour waited and I, and I so wanted to give it a great review. I so wanted to to fall in love with it, you know, even more than what I had. But it that little thing kind of ruined it. You right. Know? Yeah. And it's tough. It's tough to get them all right. Uh, it's not an easy industry. I mean, what other industry do you have thousands or millions of people, especially now, able to come in and able to come in and judge you? Yes. For every little thing that you mm-hmm. do. I mean, it's it's a tough, tough business. And what I what I always tell everybody is. Um, don't review unless you've been there two or three times. Right, exactly. Get a, get a full picture. Try some different plates. Give the benefit of the doubt to that. the yeah, place. you're right. Yeah. Because it's just too hard, especially if you go for opening. If you're doing reviews after a grand opening, I I just can't even believe that's 
possible because there's they're they're not even who they're going to be yet. Right. They let them establish themselves. Culture, yeah. yeah. Let them establish themselves. Let them um, figure th- some things out, and right. then and then you can get on Yelp or wherever you want to get and review it. You yeah, know? I think I think that I love that. You know, and I think we all need to heed that, including myself. I, I'm I'm going to use that from now on. You go to the place, give it another shot. Right. And then see if it's consistent that way. Then you can. Um, do I, yeah, that's so good. Cause consistency over long term is what really matters. Everybody has a bad day. The mm-hmm. chef could have, and especially in a restaurant where you got so many different, you know, um, things going on and you got different, you got the server, you got a bartender, you got a che- you got a cook, you know, you, you don't know if that cook's going to be there the next time. And so, um, give it one or two times. And if it's still terrible, then by all means, right. Write that review. Or if there's still something that's bothering you, write that review because then that's feedback for the location and, and maybe they adjust. Um, that's the other thing too, you, you know, locations have to be able to just based on what feedback they're getting, um, no matter how, how hard that is. Yeah. Have you, have you had a, a restaurant or bar here ask for reviews pretty regularly? Yeah. Yeah, for is sure. That, is that a process you've seen or? Yeah. Um, it's just tough, um, because a lot of them are dealing with Yelp and, uh, Yelp reviews are weighted differently. That I don't even want to get into that. It's so, so complicated. <laughs> yeah, well, if you're a digital marketer, there there's a love hate relationship yeah. with Yelp. <laughs> so so I get questions about that, that that a lot of times that I can't help necessarily because my review or my readers some of my readers will but like my staff review isn't going to have the same weight on Yelp that a Yelp elite would have. Right. Or some of these other things. So um, and that's frustrating on my side too because I want to help however I can. But if those Yelp reviews get buried, there's nothing I can do. Yeah, and the um, there's conspiracy theories oh, that yeah. I have behind Yelp. Oh, so. there's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it all makes sense because they're 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 making money one way or another. Yeah, I don't understand why. Um, because I know on an Apple phone, when it goes to if you go to Apple Maps, it goes strictly to Yelp. I don't know why they haven't. I mean, they have a oh, ton of money. Wow. I don't know why they haven't bought Yelp out. Right. You know, they could have they could buy them out and True. Then, you know, I mean, then they would be in competition with Google. But that's right. another side note. But as far as, so you walk in the door, first thing is you're, you're looking at the appearance, you're looking at, you know, how the staff is treating the customer internally as far as, you know, and I don't want to bore people, but internally as far as if you're a business owner or manager of a restaurant, I, I can't even imagine. I wouldn't even want to, you know, I mean, it's open seven days a week. Yeah. You know, a lot of restaurants are open seven days a week. You have staff turnover and everything else. What are some advice to them if they're feeling burnout, they're there six, seven days a week? What are some of the things that they can do um, maybe to get a fresh perspective? Read. I, I, I always um, – there's so much stuff online now, um, different – whether it's from the service industry side to the marketing side. So if you're, right. if you're trying to generate business or if you're just trying to take care of your business that you have now, right. there's so many useful tutorials. There's useful links. Um, I'm on Reddit every single day because there's so much – so many things that I just pull off of there and try to use in my daily life. Um, yeah, that's R E D D I T. Right. And you can download the app, and you can go by, um, like, could, if you you could type in market restaurant marketing. Or, yeah, and there'll be a subreddit just dedicated to that with a bunch of different users that are giving their their feedback on different things. And there's so much there's so much useful things on there. Um, that's a good way to you know when you're frustrated in the in the we all get blinders sometimes and we all get in right. our own bubble is. Um, the other thing that I do is I look at other similar companies, you know, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel, you know, look at, look at other companies, social media that you want, that you think your restaurant or bar or just your business emulates. Um, how, how does their stuff look? Um, and it's just, you know, it's market research, right? Get out of your bubble, get out, step away from whatever business you you have for a minute and try to pick and choose whatever you can. That's useful from other people that have done it well and are successful. Right. I, I, and I do that every year. And I think and it's something that I had learned from an actual pastor uh, of a church had talked to me about it, but that he takes um, two or three days, like a weekend or whatever, and cuts his cell phone off yeah. and goes and takes his laptop and will do the research and will go and he goes by himself. Wow. You know, I mean, you could take off to the mountains, you yeah. could go to Santa Fe, you could go to Arizona, wherever you, Dallas, wherever you want to go. Right. Um, and sits there and just takes that helicopter view, yeah. gets out of the madness and gets up and looks. And I think, I, I think what you're, I mean, everything you've been saying is amazing today, but I think that is so important when you take that view where you can look down at yeah. um, your bar or restaurant, you know, or business, not 
get so stuck into it, you know, yeah. because we've all seen where we're, we've, we've all done it where the mop bucket sitting out there. We didn't see it, but the customers are looking at the dirty mop, you yep, know? Yep. Um, and we walk past it a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> it, we, we've gotten so used to the dirty glasses sitting up on the counter with the little tray. Yeah. You know, uh, are, you know, people yelling and screaming at each other, you know, and because yeah. it, it's their business and they don't care that the customers hear them, you know? Right, right. <laughs> you know, it's those things <laughs> that we get into. Yeah, so... The um, perspective is the thing there, though, right? And And not everybody... Especially when things are crazy, I, I get that you can't take a week off and decompress on a beach somewhere, right? Right. But if it's an hour or if it's a, you know, if it's an afternoon or whatever it is, getting it out and trying to, I, I call it like perspective exercise. I'm, I'm always trying to make myself see the big picture, especially mm. when things are frustrating in the, in the micro, right. in the, right. in the moment. Um, pull out of it, see, see what the big picture is. If it still makes sense, what doesn't make sense, because that's where you're going. Right. It doesn't it doesn't always matter as much what's happening right this moment as where you're trying to get to. Mm, yeah, that's so good. I love that because at the end of the day, you have to look at and say, um, am I treating my customers well? Yeah. Am I serving them to the best of my ability? Is my staff serving them to the best of my right. ability? And if they're not, then either it's ultimately I look at it as this way. Ultimately, it's my fault as, as an owner. Yeah. And there may need to change that I need to make. Um, let's get into that a little bit. What if somebody wanted to make, what if a business owner wants to make a change or a general manager wants to make a change? Um, and they get a little, um, they're getting some rough feedback. You know, maybe you are a general manager of a restaurant and the owners, you know, are stuck this way. What are some of the things that you can do to kind of help create, um, that change? Feedback. So that's another useful tool for social media, right? Um, because a lot of things that work start as small. Maybe it's a maybe it's a special that you just threw out there, or maybe it's a happy hour that that you tried, right? And if you're seeing feedback from one sales numbers, right? Right. And then two, um, if you create something and it and it goes bananas bananas on social media, going to I don't care if it's your your boss or if if it's me going to somebody trying to get them to. Uh, work with me if I can show them numbers if I can show them look people are interested in this right data exactly. analytics that right. works the same way right um, and, and I think a lot of times you know when you're you're in the business or your general manager or your manager you don't necessarily think of it like that I right. mean me and you are both marketing guys so I think right. we, we may think of it more like that but if you can prove there's interest hey the owner still might not be into it but at least you did your due diligence and you know took the feedback that you're getting combined with information and presented it right it's uh, to me i look at it as if i was presenting something yeah, and I, I didn't think, know I, I think anybody if they if they saw feedback you know especially on the social media side and let's get into that a little bit so let's let's say you are a business owner general manager and you're wanting to get more into social media and you own a bar or restaurant what we, we talked a little bit about it we kind of went surface but let's go a little bit more detail sure. if you don't mind um let's pick Instagram, for instance. You know, I actually saw that new launch with that one place that you're talking about. Saw, yeah. had, I saw their logo with the little dog or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then it had, let's get a little bit into Instagram, if you don't mind, and a little bit more detailed with that. What, as far as what what a business should be focusing right. on? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I think Instagram is as um, more so than any of the social medias is uh, imagery visually driven, right? Right. Um, so... Your Instagram needs to, and, and there's two ways to look at this. One, you're looking at every image by itself, right? Mm. And then you're looking at them all together because there's a theme. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that, that second part is lost. But if you look at some of the really you know, beautiful and well-thought-out pages, when you scroll through it, there's a theme through the whole thing, even down to colors. Um, and if you, have, you, if, you're, if you have certain colors in your logo, um, the, the, the ones I notice... Um, they'll integrate those into imagery throughout. Right, um, right. And and I think that's important. That that's that's a more of a artistic side of things. Um, but getting back to why I think it's really important, Instagram should to me, first thing you should be thinking about is okay, what makes some of our products different than other products? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you want to showcase on right. Instagram. Um, you brought up the salt yard. We did a, you know there was a video on there. Uh, that we launched yesterday of their, uh, what is it, a jalapeno margarita. I, I forgot what it's called, but people started sharing that like crazy because it's unique and the, and the video was really high quality. 
and they're they're trying to carve into that difference between right, them and right. everybody else. If your burger looks exactly like everybody else's, why would anybody share it? Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's really sharing really is visual. free too, right? <laughs> and that's how I think about it. You know, I, anything you put on there, you're trying your best to get people to like, comment, and share. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, then why are you putting it on there? Right, exactly. Yeah, and I and I think um, and using Instagram stories. Yeah, that's important too. Yeah, I mean right. we all go up there and click those little circles. Yeah. and watch all of those. And sure. and if you don't know, I encourage you if you don't know about Instagram stories, go online and read about how long people are staying with Instagram stories and and how like right now um I just read an article here the other day um and and I know you know the same thing Instagram is is number 1 right now it's yeah. it, especially for that demographic that you're trying yep. to read the young professional um they're staying on site on that app longer than people are staying on Facebook yep. or, or or any of the others so those stories hold people and if you're consistently creating content that you can put like a launch you know for instance you can literally take all those videos that you've done at the launch everything that you've done at the launch from your menu from you know yeah. from your presentation of food you can have so much content off of that two hours or three hours or whatever it is yeah that you can use for a lot of different things yeah you can use it for several months you yeah know? um and i and i think that's important we forget about and it's so easy to post Instagram stories. It really it, is. And yeah. if you need a bartender to do it or, you know, and that's what I encourage uh, people to do. If you have somebody that, you know, is deeply ingrained in the culture, yeah. if you can't afford to hire somebody to do social media right. um, at your business, get that cheerleader that loves your business more than anything yep. and give them access to your accounts and let them post for you and yeah, encourage I've done it. That. I've done that. We've done that all the way back. I mean, we, way back when we, before I mean, when we first started the magazine, we had um, a go-go dancer down in effects that would do social media for us in the club. Yeah, see, that's perfect, right? especially in that arena. Yeah. I mean, you have a club. Literally, you have content. Yeah. Every night you're open. Right. And I get there is some, you know, hesitation or wait. We don't want to give everybody your passwords, and you don't. But we're talking about somebody that obviously you trust and cares about your brand. Right. right. It's not just some guy sitting at the bar here. Do you can change your password in two seconds. You can. I yeah. mean, if we're giving them access to the register right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you should be fine with the snapchat password, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly and, and then just watch it you know and yeah. monitor and have a couple other people watch it and monitor it but um that person that 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 person that you know i went to a brewery the other day and you could just tell um the waiter had so much passion for the beers yeah you know somebody like that he would love to be able to take that beer and talk about the beer and walk around and go in behind the scenes yeah and watch it being brewed you know and and it's just sad because you don't see a lot of that on Instagram. You know, there there's right. there's a few bars and breweries that are doing it well, but show how you make the drink. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know we don't like to give all our secrets away, but sure. You know, it, that stuff people remember that when they when they see things, the content. You know, like pouring the you said pouring the chili in the yeah yeah, yeah. stuff like that. I mean, it, it's so unique. Um, so you, you touched on something. Behind the scenes is really important because it makes it makes uh, consumers feel like they're getting access to something that they're not supposed to see. Right, yeah. Um, and behind, we all love that. That's why yeah. we love reality shows. Right, yeah. So that's really important. Don't be afraid to, you know, t yeah, talk about what you put into the food or, or go back and, you know, get an image of the of the cook or behind the right. scenes really ma really works. It really matters. And, and go on there as a, re you know, it's so funny because I watched this one time and it was so interesting. Somebody went on there and they was like, hey, you know, we had some issues for the last couple of weeks and we've got them figured them out and and they talked about it it was yeah. a, manuf a a united states manufacturing company oh, and they were like you know the looms were messed up we're sorry uh they even went on at christmas time and they're like we're sorry these products we underestimated the amount of people that would buy them and we're sorry that they're out of stock here's the reason why yeah you know and they went into you know this person you know we had to let them go and so distribution sure. was down and you know and i watched the whole thing <laughs> i was really intrigued you know and if I'm watching, I know other people are watching it. But it made me like, oh, it made me think like they're normal people. Yeah. yeah. It's not robots, you know. Right. And if you can, again, if you're connecting to your audience, they're going to be a lot. They're, they're going to hold back on that review until their third time because they know you compared to or they, at least you're honest with them. Right. Right. Um, right. I think one of the things you touched on earlier um, about waiting for an hour, there's two different things there. Right. If you wait for an hour and you're the only one in the restaurant, you're probably going to lose your mind. 
But if you're in a super busy place, right, and and the staff is like, hey, we're really slammed. We're doing whatever we can for you. You know, here's a complimentary chips and salsa or something. Yeah, an update. Yeah. Then just that honesty goes right. so far, and it alleviates so many issues. But there is that stigma where everybody wants to seem like, oh no, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. When it's obvious not everything's are fi- everything's fine. Just be straight and. So how do you empower, let me ask you this, like bartenders and, and wait staff and stuff like that, you know, free chips and salsa or a free drink or whatever. Yeah. How do you empower that to the employees? One, where they're not giving it away all the time. Right. Um, you know, but when there's situations like that, that they can, I know Nordstrom does amazing at that. Um, but, you know, ha- have you had success with that or have you seen yeah. success with yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm all about taking care of, um, of people. So um, you've just put in systems and, and really there's a, there should be uh, a step-by-step approach if if you know somebody's sitting at the bar and maybe their food order got wrong, so it's going to take an extra 30 minutes. What is the process? It's almost like, you know, way back, way back, I was in, uh, I worked at a call center and I was in uh, sales, or I was in saves, I'm sorry. So you had a whole list of things you could go through to help, help right, the process, right. right? So it's the same kind of thing where the management knows, okay, if, if, if they did wait an hour, then it's okay to give them chips and salsa. Or if there was an issue with their food, then it's okay to comp it in these scenarios, right? And it's right. just about the, the systems and the process that you have in place. Because you're right, you don't want it just happening willy-nilly everywhere. Because then all of a sudden, everything's getting given away and you don't know why, you know. So um, it, systems are hard, especially in bars and restaurants, um, because there are so many variables. But the more you have, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, and I think the medical industry is really good with it as oh, far yeah. as resetting the clock. They yep. move you from one room to the next room to yeah. the next room. And it's they really each have, clever. Yeah, it's, and so next thing you know, you've been there for four to five minutes. You haven't seen the doctor yet. Right. But you feel like stuff's happening. Sure. You know, so. Um, and That's it, another reason why you see um, waiting rooms, right? And then you go and then you get seated, but there were tables open. You know, they're, they're doing the same thing. They're separating those times. Maybe they didn't have a server for those tables anyway. Right. But. It doesn't feel like if you're waiting in the waiting room for 45 minutes or if you're waiting at the table for 30 minutes. Right. If it's split up, it doesn't feel as long. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's always amazed me, too, why um, there haven't, you know, when you're waiting, maybe it's a full restaurant and you're waiting, um, how understaffed bar the bars are. True. You know, and then because I always like if I have to wait and I know it's going to be a long wait, I like to go get a drink. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go get an IPA. Yeah. Um, you know, and then you have to cash it's awkward you got to cash out with the bartender (laughs) you know and get that one drink or give them your card and then transfer to table i know people don't you know tips and all that stuff um it's always amazed me why a restaurant or bar hasn't had something a process for that part you know just to make sure people can get drinks there's some more things being implicated pos systems are getting better and better um i mean i'm sure you've been to places now where they're literally putting it on a pad when they're ordering right right in front of you that's Mm going to increase some of the things um as technology goes i think a lot of those things will will go away. Um, one of the problems with staffing in Albuquerque, though, is um, it's so inconsistent. Business is so inconsistent here. So you have to be careful about your payroll. Um, and you're always um, weighing on the side of s- saving money, right? Right. Uh, so you see that a lot where you get slammed all of a sudden and you're like, well, how do they only have two or three servers? And it's probably because typically at that time, they're not that busy. Normally that busy, you know? right. And, and you got to adjust over time if that that night starts to get busier then you adjust but albuquerque is still up and down depending on what day of the week it is and what's right. opening and uh you know what's going on where that you, i mean it's, a lot of times it's the same groups getting shuffled to different parts of the city and it's just hard to overstaff in this town right yeah because uh, you know i mean you know you're always looking at cost and, yeah and like you said you know earlier your roi i think that's the most important well let's get into um we're going to wrap it up but i want to get into your um some of the things that your magazine does, you know, everybody looks at a magazine and they look at the print side of things. Right. But can you tell me some of uh, the, and I know launching an event is super important and you guys are great at that. But can you tell me a little bit more about some of the things that you guys do? Yeah. Some of the big stuff that we do now is we do a lot of social media management. Um, so we're helping um, from whatever you need, from start to finish, whether it's creating content or straight posting um, for locations. We do a lot of that now. That's taking up a lot of what our focus is um but we even do i mean we build websites for companies we've built commercials for companies um even if you just need straight food photography we'll come in and shoot that as an independent thing even if you're not one of our partners um we we try when i first started you know albuquerque the magazine was 350 pages and 
the alibi was 40 years old and, you know, intricate in, right. in the area. And I had to do whatever I could just to get people to take a chance with us. And it, it meant from going from building their ad to putting it in the magazine to then going and shooting their events to literally taking people into their place and making sure they said that they were from us right, and bought right. drinks, right? So everything we could. And that kind of turned into our bread and butter. Now we have so many different things that we can do for a place or a business um, compared to just a straight ad in the magazine where I think that's the base of what we, we still do. And our magazine is so, uh, like I said, flies off the shelves and is really important. And now that um, readership is up across the country for magazines and books, it's coming back around. Um, beyond that, we do whatever we can for our clients. And um, I think that's the, that's the main reason why we're, we're successful where not everybody else is in this city. Yeah, I, I think alone just taking a business owner, taking your expertise and the, the amount of consulting that you do. Right. I mean, th basically, you're basically getting the marketing for free if you look at what you could charge for your for consulting. Oh, absolutely. And seeing things. So I, I think it's uh, – and if you haven't, um, what's the best way to get a hold of you, Josh? I mean, is there um, – do you have a, a – is it there an email, email on the yeah. website? Email is probably the best way. My, my email is josh at abq-live.com. So it's um, abq-live. Yeah, don't forget the dash. Uh, josh at abq-live.com. You can always get on the website and just go to contact us. A lot of that stuff still comes to me. Okay. Um, social media, we still see a lot of that. You get on Facebook and say, hey, trying to get a hold of Josh, you know, come right to me. Oh, okay, um, perfect. We, um, a lot of that stuff, yeah. Well, cool. Well, I encourage you, if you especially if you're – um, looking at targeting young professionals, looking at targeting millennials, um, Josh is a person to see. Thank you, Josh, for coming in today. And that is today's episode with Albuquerque Business Podcast. Thanks for listening and want to wish each of you a great day. If you want to, we would love to have you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes um, so that you never miss an episode of what's happening local for business here in Albuquerque. You can stop by our website also at abqpodcast.com. That's abqpodcast.com. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thank you to our sponsor, DukeCityMarketing.com. Please go to abqpodcast.com where you can get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner in Albuquerque.